President, please be seated. The Today, the chamber continues to hear testimony of uh, the witness Sok Sopol in relation to Trapeant Modem worksite. At the conclusion of his testimony, the chamber will commence hearing testimony. Rather, the oral submissions on two issues. Des arguments. One is in relation to the request by Nunchir for additional uh, witness. In relation to the Peng Tmo Dam website, pursuant to Rule 87.4, that is document A368. And second, application number 87.4, request by Deuxième the international co-prosecutor in relation to hearing the testimony of the expert Issa Osman. Sur la comparution de l'expert Issa Osman. That is his concern in relation to the confidentiality of the witness. Le bureau des co-procureurs a exprimé And the document I refer to is A36.7. 367.4 by the international co-investigating judge. Greffier, please uh, report the attendance of the parties uh, and other individuals uh, at today's proceedings. Madame la greffière, veuillez faire votre rapport. Greffier, Mr. President, for today's uh, proceedings, all parties to this case are uh, present. Mr. Nunchi is present in the hearing cell downstairs. He has waived his rights to be present in the courtroom. The waiver has been delivered to the graduate. The witness who is to conclude his testimony today, that is Mr. Sotopol, is present in the courtroom. And there is no reserve witness today. Thank you. Merci. President, thank you, Mrs. Jesu Wong. The Chamber now decides on the request by Nun Chia. The Chamber has received a waiver from Nun Chia dated 30 September 2015, which states that due to his health, headache, back pain, he cannot sit or concentrate for long, and in order to effectively participate in future hearings, he requests to waive his right to participate in and be present at the 30 September 2015 hearing. Having seen the medical report of Nun Chi by the duty doctor for the accused at the ECCC dated 30 September 2015, which notes the health and the health condition of Nun Chi that he has severe back pain, and when he sits for long and recommends that the chamber grant him his request so that he can follow the proceedings remotely from the holding cell downstairs. Based on the above information and pursuant to Rule 815 of the ECCC internal rules, the chamber grants Nunji his request to follow today's proceedings remotely from the holding cell downstairs via audiovisual means. And the chamber instructs the every unit personnel to link the proceedings to the room downstairs so that no can follow it, and that applies to the whole day. The chamber now hands the floor to the co-prosecutors to continue putting questions to this witness. You may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honors. Good morning, Counsel. Good morning to you too, Mr. Witness. Yesterday we discussed uh, your work quota and what would happen to individuals or groups who failed to meet their work quota. Can you start off by telling us how often you personally or your group failed to meet your quota? Uh, 
Although we strive our best, despite our exhaustion, malgré les or nous sickness, nous de notre mieux. Et we had to be there malades, to be present at the work site to uh, meet the quota. Nous and if there is the cast, then the ration uh, was not reused. Et ainsi, on ne réduisait pas notre ration. And on occasions when you failed to meet the quota, what was your, what kind of food you, would you receive? What was your ration if you failed to meet your quota? For example, the ration was three ladles, and for failure to meet the quota, the ration would use the two, two ladles of glue. And what would you do to survive or to get enough to eat when your food ration had been reduced? We had no other means. Uh, we just focus on completing the work quota so that we could receive the, the three letters of glue. I want to ask you about something that you say in your OCIJ statement. Uh, this is document E3 slash 7755, page number in Khmer is 00279115, English 00293004, and French 00338221. This is what you say, quote, the people in my group were re-educated and our ration was reduced many times. At that time, we were very hungry we picked up the burned faim. part of the yam that Nous the chefs threw away to eat. We would have been smashed if we were seen, unquote. Si uh, does that refresh your memory? Do you recall scavenging for food in that way? Those people who had uh, jammed, they threw away the burnt part of the skin. And we did not dare to pick up the, the thrown away uh, jammed, but we actually secretly used our uh, uh, food to, to get it and to share it among uh, the three of us. Because if we were caught or picking up uh, the thrown away gem, we would be uh, tortured. And why do you say that you would be tortured if you had been seen picking up that food? What makes you say that? Cette nourriture. Qu'est-ce qui vous fait dire que vous auriez été torturé? Because we were told in the meeting that we should eat what we were given, and if we were to eat something out of the ration caught, then we would be disciplined. Can you tell us what kind of water you had to drink and how much of it was available? Pouvez-vous nous décrire l'eau qui vous était donnée à boire et son à sa qualité et sa quantité? If we were to work uh, near a lake, then si we drank water from the lake. lake. However, if uh, our spot, our work site was far from the Mais water si source, let's say half a kilometer, then the water would be transported by a truck to the work site. However, I did not know where they got the water. And when the water was transported to you by truck, did you receive as much as you wanted, or was there a limited amount?
They gave us uh, enough water we could fill the, our uh, bottle uh, for uh, that day. Okay. Um, I want to ask you now about the people you described yesterday. You said that there were young people at the dam armed with long knives or swords. Can you give us an estimate of approximately how old those people were? Those people who were watching over us uh, were in a group. Uh, it could be in a group of three or four. Uh, for instance, uh, a woman and two uh, pretty young children. The woman would be carrying mm, a weapon while the two young children uh, carried the uh, sword. <coughs> what kind of weapon would the, the woman be carrying, the older woman? Cette femme un peu plus âgée. I did not uh, recognize it because I was pretty young at the time. However, it was a, a pretty small. Certainement plus le reconnaître. J'étais assez jeune à l'époque. C'était une arme. And I don't see it used uh, these days. Je ne l'ai pas revu. And just for clarity, are we talking about some kind of firearm, like a pistol or a rifle, or some other kind of weapon? It was a folded bat uh, rifle. And my recollection is that you described these people as militia. Is that correct? Were they militia or soldiers or guards? What, what were they exactly? I heard that people refer to them as a militia, although I myself uh, was never uh, sure about it, Mais whether they were soldiers or militia. Certain, je ne sais pas si le soldat, le and do you know whether they were associated with the commune level or district level de la or sector level district, or whom they reported to? No, I did not. Réponse, non. I only focused on the, the work. Moi, je me and I sur kept mes doing what I was assigned to. Je I did not know where they came from or where the uh, orders uh, came from. Les ordres you told us yesterday Question. about one occasion you were aware yeah. of when a person was uh, tied up to a wooden frame and then raised and lowered several times. And I think you also mentioned that, that he had been told that if he didn't improve his work, he would be killed. Now, my question is, is this something that you're only aware of happening one time, or was this particular punishment used on more than one occasion, to your knowledge? I only uh, witnessed one uh, occurrence within uh, my unit. Je vu seule fois dans mon unité. The group of three uh, people, that is uh, those I refer to, personnes, ces personnes uh, actually uh, took him away and did that. And when he returned, he non, told non, me non, that he has oui. his feet hung upside down and, and they dropped him from the wooden frame. And he was warned that if he did that, that again, the next time he would be killed. Okay, thank you for that. Um, I want to ask you now about beatings. Did you ever see the militia that you've described beat anyone? And if so, who?
While I was uh, working, yes, I did uh, see uh, the beatings. However, it was not uh, too severe to make the people collapse or fainted. Sometimes they push the workers with their long swords to force them to work hard. And can you tell us Question. under what conditions they would do that? Why would they do that vous, to a particular worker? Pourquoi under what circumstances? I did not know, maybe they were too free, they didn't have anything to do, so to poke the workers uh, for fun. Did you hear them say anything to the workers as they would poke them with their swords? They ordered us to work harder, and if we were actually working hard, then they didn't poke us with a sword, but if somebody was thought not to work hard or was shivering from fever, then the person would be poked with a sword. And was this done in public within the view of other workers? Et cela était-il fait en public devant les autres travailleurs Non. Yes, it happened oui. right at the, the spot where oui, we were working. Sur le site They poked the workers with their swords. Ils donnaient des coups d'épée aux travailleurs. À l'endroit où ils During your time at the Trappiang Tma Dam work site. Did you ever hear anything about special units for workers who were viewed as lazy? Please uh, repeat your question. Did you ever learn anything about the existence of units that workers who were thought of as lazy would be sent to? Separate units. Uh, it did not happen at the uh, area where I worked. They did not have uh, this special unit for the perceived uh, lazy workers, but they set up a unit for the hard-working workers. I'd like to ask you now about arrests. Did you ever see or did you ever learn about situations in which uh, workers were tied up and led away either by the militia or by anyone else. Yes, I saw some. Oui. Sometimes I saw it uh, every uh, Few days, two or three workers were arrested and taken away, and I like to stress that those who were taken away never returned. I did not know where they were kept or whether they were kept in this so-called uh, lazy group. I did not know. I think you, you mentioned that you Question. saw that happen every few days. Mm -hmm. Are you able to estimate on how many occasions you saw workers taken away during your time at the dam work site? Combien de fois vous avez vu que l'on emmenait des travailleurs sur le chantier? They were uh, taken uh, for re-education at the chief's uh, place, Réponse. although I did not know uh, Ils étaient emmenés pour where it was. À du chef, so mais I je was ne afraid, pas and that's why I kept Moi, on uh, working hard. Et pourquoi travaillé aussi dur que possible. 
Who was it who tied up these workers and led them away? It was those uh, young uh, militia. They tied up the workers and led them away. I refer to the, uh, this uh, group of militia who were watching over us uh, while we were working there. Were those workers in your unit or workers in other units that you could see? No, they were not in my Ils unit, but they were working uh, nearby next to my unit, and uh, we could uh, see them while they could also see us. And sometimes they would throw a piece of uh, dirt at us to signal us or to alert us that the group uh, was uh, coming, and we did that uh, to them also to alert them if the, the militia uh, approached us. And why would you do that? Why would you why would you try to signal your fellow workers that the militia was coming? So that we alert them and they uh, kept on working hard. Because when they were not here, we could do our normal uh, work despite our exhaustion. But if they came, for example, they came from the west side, then we would signal one another to, to, to seem to work uh, harder. And when they left, then we worked uh, in a normal way. Do you know why the people were arrested whom you saw being tied up and taken away? I did not know the reason. I only saw the arrest. Uh, they were arrested while they were working. During your time at the work site, were you ever required to make a biography or tell anyone about your personal background? Demander de rédiger une biographie ou de parler de vos antécédents. Uh, during the regime, I did not uh, make any biography, nor did I see anyone uh, do it. Je we only kept on working. Sous le régime, et je jamais été de I Nous think you mentioned a bit earlier that the people who were arrested were taken to the chief's house. Can you tell us dit, who the chief was and where his house was and what it was used for? They were taken to the chief house, however, I uh, did not know where the house was. And uh, the person who was in charge uh, in the area was Tawal, but I did not know about the location of the house or the chief. And just to be clear, are you saying that they were taken to Taval's house? Donc pour que tout soit bien clair, vous dites qu'ils ont été emmenés à la maison de Taval, n'est-ce pas? Réponse. They said that uh, they were taken to, uh, to the chief's house, and I only knew that my chief was Taval. La maison du chef, et je savais que mon chef c'était Taval. You said that, that these workers never returned. Uh, given that they were not in your unit, how are you able to say that they never returned? They uh, worked in a group and they worked uh, near where I uh, worked. So usually they were put into three small groups, 
And of course, uh, when we were close uh, to one another, I could see uh, that one person from that group was missing since uh, yesterday. And sometimes the, the, the person who was missed was replaced uh, by someone else. So we could see autre. straight away that it was not the same person, Il the same worker that uh, was taken away. Were these people who were arrested children or adults, or were there some of both? The workers who were arrested were children. For the segments that I worked, uh, consisted only of, of children workers, uh, not adult workers. Adult workers work uh, on a separate segment. And are you able to estimate approximately how many children workers you saw being arrested during your entire time at the, at the work site? Please uh, repeat your question. I know this may be a, a difficult question. Uh, can you estimate the total number of children that you saw being tied up and taken away during your time at the Trapping Tma Dam work site? It is uh, difficult to give you an estimate difficile pour moi as uh, it happened non. randomly. For example, this aléatoire. day only one worker uh, was arrested and taken away, Un and a few days later, arrêté, two or three workers were taken away. So I cannot tell you how many workers uh, had been arrested for the duration of uh, working at the uh, uh, dam work site. I myself was uh, afraid of being arrested too. Moi aussi, peur you mentioned that the workers uh, who were arrested didn't return. Do you know what happened to them? No, I did not. Uh, they were taken away and disappeared. I did not know what happened to them. Were you aware of any prisons or re-education offices near the Trapping Tma Dam work site that workers were taken to? No, I did not know. No. I only knew the location where I worked. I did not know where they were detained. I only knew where I worked, and only those who worked uh, in Je the prison or detention center would know, and it means uh, those soldiers or militias who worked there would know about uh, the location. I want to ask you now about killings at the dam work site. Did you ever see any workers killed at the work site uh, by the militia, by soldiers, or by anyone else? Yes, I uh, saw uh, some. Uh, in uh, various places, uh, but it did not occur uh, that often. Uh, once in every uh, 10 days or so, they uh, kill them and then we uh, buried them uh, or cover them with the dirt. And you were speaking in the plural, so when, when this killing would occur, as you say, once every 10 days, uh, would it be one person being killed or more than one person being killed? 
plusieurs personnes que l'on a exécutées. Lorsque je travaillais là-bas, je l'ai vu à deux reprises. Et sur each of those occasions, how many how many victims were there? How many people were killed on each occasion? Combien de personnes étaient exécutées à chacune de ces occasions? I uh, did not know whether or not uh, those people uh, were re-educated or so, but I only uh, saw people uh, brought these people and then uh, they got killed. And then we uh, covered uh, the dead body with uh, the dirt. My question is, on these occasions when you saw people being killed, did you see was it one person who was killed? Was it two people who were killed? Was it five? Was it ten? What was the number of people killed on each of those occasions? I uh, saw uh, they uh, brought them uh, one at a time. They never brought uh, many people. Uh, they uh, meant to uh, deter us. So they brought one, and then they uh, killed uh, uh, him or her. And then the next 10 or so days, uh, they would bring another one uh, that was meant to deter all of us. And why do you say that that killing was meant to deter all of you? What makes you think that it was intended as deterrence? When they killed uh, that person, they told uh, the comrades, uh, saying, comrades, uh, in the future, if you uh, fail to follow uh, them, uh, then your fate will eventually be like uh, that person. So if they required us to dig uh, the canal, uh, we had to do, otherwise uh, we would uh, end up like uh, the person who was killed. And who specifically said that to you? Who told you that you would also be killed if you failed to follow your instructions? Uh, militia. At that à time, uh, the, the, there were militiamen uh, who uh, came to uh, tell us, uh, and I did not know actually where uh, these militia, uh, militiamen were uh, positioned, but they brought uh, these people uh, in, and I did not even know um, where uh, they brought that person who was killed. Uh, from either because uh, they only brought it and then kill in front of us uh, and then they said that if we fail to follow the instructions our fate would be like the person who was killed. You said that the person was killed in front of you. Can you estimate how many workers were present who, who witnessed this, these executions? Uh, many people uh, saw uh, the killing. I de think uh, there could have been around five, uh, 50 to 100 people who actually saw the killing. Can you tell us where the killings would take place? They kill it uh, at the dam site. Sur le site du barrage. It was, to my recollection, about uh, 
100 uh, meters away from the uh, corner of the uh, dammed. And I, I think you said that we, uh, meaning the workers, buried the bodies. Is that right? Was it the was it the other workers who buried the bodies of these people who were killed? That, that's what I <coughs> saw, and uh, immediately after uh, the person was killed, uh, we were required to carry uh, dirt uh, to cover the cops. Did you ever personally participate in the burying of the bodies of these people who had been killed? M many people actually um, carried the uh, dirt uh, to uh, cover the uh, corpse. There were many people actually. Uh, we uh, covered the dead body uh, with uh, dirt. Uh, we did not do it. I did not do it alone, but uh, I uh, did it with, together with other workers. And uh, actually, the dead body was uh, buried on the bed of the dam. And can you tell us exactly who it was that, that killed the victim? Was it the militia or was it someone else? Yes, um, they were the militiamen. I did not know where they uh, came from and, and where they uh, took uh, the uh, person uh, from either. When we were working over there, there was no military men at that time, uh, but uh, once they brought somebody in, then uh, they were militia who uh, brought that uh, person to be killed. And then they would, uh, you know, go into um, different uh, directions. We could not even recognize their face, and we were very uh, frightened uh, of our fate as well. So whenever we saw the militiamen uh, came, uh, all of us would put our face down, we dare not even look at uh, their face. Can you tell us how these people were killed? What, what weapons were used? What was the technique for the killing? They uh, used the stick uh, to beat the person uh, to death. I'd like to ask you now just briefly about the health conditions of the workers at the site. Did, did the workers at the site get sick often? And if so, what kind of illnesses did they have? Matt. In terms of health conditions, uh, we were all weak. Uh, we were uh, sick, but uh, we did not uh, stop uh, working. We had to continue uh, working until uh, we collapsed. And then if we refused uh, to carry out the work for the days, they would accuse us of uh, being conscious illness. Uh, so we would eventually be uh, re-educated. So at that time, I was told that we had to continue working without uh, stopping. And one day I was uh, sick, and then uh, they actually brought me some uh, tablets, uh, some uh, pills, uh, and I did not recognize it because it is small and uh, it looks like tablet, but something. But I uh, had to uh, take it, and we had to continue working at that time. Uh, we dare not stop. I'd also like to ask you about the hygiene conditions. Uh, can you tell us whether there were any toilet facilities? whether you had any way of bathing yourself, 
whether your food was clean, things like that. Well, in terms of hygiene, it was uh, nothing actually. Uh, as for uh, the <coughs> call of uh, nature, we uh, did not have any latrine. Uh, we actually could uh, release ourselves anywhere where we could uh, at the time. But as for uh, the urine, uh, we have to uh, collect urine. We have to keep it uh, together so that they can use it as the uh, fertilizer. So we had to uh, keep it in, in uh, a place. In your OCIJ interview, you say that you eventually uh, ran away from the, the Trapping Tamo Dam work site. Can you tell us why you decided to run away? Because at that time I uh, overworked and uh, the working condition was uh, harsh. So I thought to myself that if I uh, continue, I would die anyway. So I uh, would uh, take the risk of uh, fleeing. So I fled into the jungles. It took me about uh, half a month. And then I uh, got to a, 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 little, a little bit better place where I had, uh, you know, some. Uh, potatoes over there that I could uh, eat. So I um, continue uh, walking, you know, I, and then I heard uh, people uh, screaming uh, because the excavator and tractor was actually uh, pushing the people into the uh, the, the hole, and they were actually screaming for help. And I'll come to that in just a minute. Can you tell me, do you know how long it was before the end of the Khmer Rouge regime that you escaped from the dam work site? How many months? I escaped uh, from the uh, dam work site. Je me suis du site well, I could not uh, recall the date because I was rather young, but in jeune. my estimation, uh, it was about uh, two or three months uh, before the uh, liberation. Uh, at that time, I ate a uh, raw potato. Uh, we did not have any fire to actually uh, grill potatoes. So uh, whatever we could get uh, at the times, we uh, ate it. Um, and at night, we would uh, try to go back to the uh, potato plantations, and then we would uh, get the raw potato and add it. Now, a moment ago, you mentioned arriving at a place uh, where you saw people screaming and falling into a pit. Can, are you able to estimate how far that place was from the Trapping Tama Dam work site? The president. Uh, Mr. Witness, please hold on. Monsieur and Témoin International Counsel for Mr. Kirsenpon, you may proceed. Oui, bonjour, Monsieur, Monsieur, merci, Monsieur le Président. Um, J'objecte sur uh, la ligne de questionnement qui um, s'annonce, uh, puisque là, clairement, uh, compte tenu de ce que vient de déclarer le témoin, à savoir que uh, il a pris uh, un demi-mois pour arriver. Apparemment, il n'y a pas de, de traduction. Yes, indeed, there is a problem with the interpretation. Mais pas de problème. Le président. 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 Le président
it seems that there is a problem with the uh, interpretation. Court officer is now instructed to check whether or not uh, it is being sorted out. Mr. President, uh, Council can speak now. We can hear her now. The President, Council, on that case, you may proceed. Uh, please uh, repeat uh, your uh, observation um, earlier because there was uh, no translation earlier in the comment you made. Très, très bien, je, je, je recommence. Je disais que euh, j'objectais à la ligne de questionnement qui, euh, s'apprête, que s'apprête à aborder, monsieur le procureur, euh, compte tenu de euh, la déclaration précédente euh, du témoin euh, indiquant qu'il avait euh, beaucoup marché s'était éloigné uh, euh, du site du barrage that, uh, du 1er janvier, compte uh, tenu du fait également qu'il a indiqué euh, avoir, euh, uh, ne pas avoir vu de centre de sécurité et a, et a déjà mentionné uh, les uh, deux exécutions auxquelles uh, il aurait assisté sur le site du, premier, du, du barrage de Trapangtma dans ces conditions si uh, le procureur uh, souhaite continuer uh, à aller sur uh, uh, ce nouveau site. Uh, je uh, tiens à rappeler qu'il n'est pas dans uh, l'ordonnance uh, uh, like de disjonction et que donc il s'agit uh, d'un point qui est hors champ du procès que uh, le procureur uh, entend aborder. Donc j'objecte à ce que cette ligne uh, de questionnement so se poursuive. cannot continue to put questions to the witness in this particular line of questioning. Uh, Mr. President, if, if I could just respond briefly. Uh, my first question was how far this location was from the Trapping to Ma Dam. I'm trying to figure out whether this was some place that was close enough to be inherently part of the site. Um, if it was not, then I would seek the Chamber's leave to just ask very limited questions about the equipment that the witness described having seen at that site in light of the fact that the witness says that there was no equipment being used to build the Trapping to Ma Dam. Is it working now? Yeah. Is it working? Ma, on the breath, some right. The objection by the defense counsel for uh, Mr. Kisamporn is not sustained uh, because even if uh, the question uh, is not uh, that, uh, precise, but it is related to the fact uh, uh, concerning uh, Trapang Tmor uh, work site. So the witness is now instructed to respond uh, to this question. Mr. Witness, uh, please uh, respond to the last question posed by the prosecution. Uh, if you can recall, otherwise uh, we will ask uh, Mr. Prosecutor to repeat his last question. It is likely that you um, do not recall it, so Mr. Prosecutor, please repeat your question. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Witness, are you able to tell us what the approximate distance was from uh, the site that you just described with the pits 
the distance from that site to the Trapping Tma Dam. À mon avis, it was about 60 to 70 kilometers away uh, from uh, Trapang Tmor uh, work site uh, to Chungka Knao uh, or Chungka Ko. In that case, I'd just like to ask you a very specific question. You describe seeing a tractor and one or more trucks in use at that location. Now, based on the work you were doing at the Trapping Tma Dam, could that tractor and could those trucks have been used to help the workers there dig the earth and transport the earth to build the dam? The President, Mr. Witness, uh, please hold on, and Council Coupe, you may President, proceed. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. President. I object to this question. Um, this is asking for speculation. The witness at the time uh, must have been 12 or 13 years old. He cannot possibly say anything about trucks that he saw uh, some 70 kilometers away from where he worked, but there was any connection. This is pure speculation. Um, the, the prosecution is seeking. Mr. President, I, perhaps my question wasn't clear. I, I was intending to ask. Oui, je, je, je pense que um, yes. je suppute quelle était l'intention uh, de Monsieur le coprocureur, mais à partir du moment what, uh, où uh, il vient d'établir que um, le, is, le témoin plutôt vient d'indiquer que um, so c'était à 70 ou 80 km du uh, barrage de Trapangsma, uh, non seulement, comme vient de l'indiquer mon confrère, uh, on lui demande de spéculer, mais en plus on essaye par cette uh, question détournée de lui faire uh, parler des faits uh, sur uh, cette, uh, ce, cette, uh, ce lieu qui se trouve à 70 km uh, du barrage de Trapinkman. Donc que ce soit pour faire de la spéculation, pour essayer d'obtenir des réponses sur des faits que précisément uh, nous, ne nous ne souhaitons pas aborder puisqu'ils ne sont pas dans le champ du procès, uh, je pense que ce soit pour lui l'autre raison, il convient de uh, rejeter... Uh, la question de Monsieur le Coprocureur. But um, I think this question should be rejected, Mr. President. Mr. Prosecutor, do you have any um, President, response le uh, to the objection made by the two defense teams? Uh, my question might not have been clear. I, my question was whether this equipment was of the type which could have been used in the kind of construction work that the witness was involved in. Of course, he was a child. Of course, he's not a construction expert. But he knows what he was doing at the Trapping Tma Dam. And he saw what this equipment was doing at this other site. So I think he probably can tell us whether the equipment could have been used to assist what was of the type that could have been used to assist the workers at the Trapping Tma Dam work site. But I, I recall this witness saying that he didn't see any machinery at all uh, at the Trapping Tma Dam work site. So how can he even make a comparison?
The objections by the two defense uh, teams uh, to the last question posed by the prosecution uh, is uh, founded. Uh, for that reason, uh, the chamber uh, ask uh, the uh, witness uh, not to respond to the last questions by the prosecutor. And at the same time, uh, we wish to uh, advise the uh, prosecution and the lead call lawyer for the civil parties that uh, we uh, would uh, give uh, you uh, only 15 more minutes uh, after we resume uh, of, of the first uh, session of the morning break, uh, that is to compensate the time lost for you. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Witness, turning back to your experience at the Trapping Tamaw Dam, I'd like to get your reaction to a statement that was made by Q Sampan in a speech that he gave in April of 1977. And this document is E3-201, Khmer 0029-2810-11, English 0041-9516, and French 0061-2170. Monsieur le Président, évidemment, je m'objecte à la question telle qu'elle est formulée par Monsieur le Procureur, puisque, si je comprends bien, il demande son avis à Monsieur le Témoin, qui, si je ne m'abuse, ne dit pas qu'il a connu ou rencontré Monsieur Kassampan à quelque moment. Donc, si on lui demande un avis, ce n'est pas un expert. Et dans ces conditions, la question n'est pas fondée et doit être trop rejetée. Encore une fois, des commentaires sur ce qu'aura pu dire Dire, euh, monsieur que son plan avant ou après euh, les faits euh, en dehors d'un contexte euh, que le le témoin euh, ne connaît pas, euh, ne permet pas à la Chambre d'évaluer euh, la crédibilité du témoin ou d'avoir des éléments de fait sur le barrage de trappin Dans ces conditions, euh, là, si nous sommes dans une sorte d'effet de manche et de plaidoirie qui n'a pas, pas lieu d'être à ce stade du procès. Si, M. le procureur entend utiliser les déclarations de M. Sampan euh, au moment des plaidoiries, il pourra le faire, mais le faire avec M. le témoin qui n'a aucun lien avec M. que Sampan et qui, encore une fois, est venu témoin sur les faits de traitement, ce n'est pas le lieu, ce n'est pas le moment, et je demande que M. le procureur ne soit pas autorisé à poser cette question. Mr. President, first of all, I hadn't asked a question. All I'd done is read some ERNs. I didn't even have a chance to read the quote that I want this witness to react to. Uh, counsel just said that this witness can't talk about comments that Q Sampan made before or after. This is a comment from April 1977. It's precisely the time period we're talking about. And it's one in which Q Sampan is discussing the experience of children in democratic Kampuchea and describing it in a particular way. Children working in democratic Kampuchea. This witness was a child working in democratic Kampuchea at exactly that time. I think it's fair to have have him react to the description that Q Sampan gave of the working conditions and of the way that the children who were working subjectively felt about it. If it assists the chamber, I could read the quote before your deliberation if you intend to deliberate. President. We haven't heard uh, the question from you that uh, whether this witness ever heard the speech made by Keith Mpon. So please uh, uh, 
tell us whether you have put such a question to the witness uh, today or even yesterday afternoon. And if not, then he is not in a position to uh, make an assessment or uh, to give his comment on the speech. Please indicate to the chamber whether the witness heard the speech made by accused Paul. And if so, when and by what means? Your Honor, I, I think the only way for me to do that would be for me to read the quotes to the witness and then ask him whether he heard Kusampan say those things. Je peux suggérer à ce moment-là une question à M. le coprocureur, à savoir, M. le témoin, avez-vous jamais entendu un discours de Kyusampan Et ensuite, on verra. If uh, the president grant uh, the deputy co-prosecutor si to read that extract, so that the witness can say whether si during the regime his living conditions si was similar to what was said le by by his Paul in his speech. I think this is uh, reasonable and that it also reflects the living condition as well as the truth in the speech made by Kim Sampon. Si, uh, Then the deputy co-prosecutor, you can uh, read uh, the quote uh, of the speech first, uh, what it's all about. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Witness, uh, just to remind you, the, the quote that I'm going to be reading is from a speech that uh, Q. Sampan made in April of 1977. And this is what he said, quote, Our children do not play with toy cars, toy boats, and toy guns, which were formerly imported at considerable cost. Our children are happy with driving sparrows away from the crops, tending cattle and buffalo, collecting natural fertilizer, and helping to build dams and embankments, and dig reservoirs and ditches." End of the quote. And my question, if the chamber would allow it, is whether that speech by Q. Sampan is an accurate reflection of your experience as a child working on a dam project during the democratic Kampuchea period. And if there is the case, then the objection by the defense team is overruled, and the chamber will allow the question to be put to the witness. And Mr. Witness, please respond to the last question put to you by the deputy co-prosecutor. Witness, it is rather long for me to catch it, so I, I don't fully, uh, fully get it. Deputy co prosecutor, please uh, read the uh, accept again, but make it rather short to make it uh, simpler for the witness to, to understand so that he can respond to it. And please try not to uh, use the word. Uh, do you understand? Because this kind of uh, phraseology is for the expert, not for an ordinary witness uh, like this uh, gentleman. Sir, I'll read the quote uh, one more time. And, and I'll shorten it to the most important part. He said, 
quote, our children do not play with toy cars, toy boats, and toy guns, which were formerly imported at considerable cost. Our children are happy helping to build dams and embankments and dig reservoirs and ditches, unquote. Sir, can you tell us your reaction to this statement? Were you happy to help to build the Trappéang Thuong Dam? I don't know what to respond to you. Je ne sais pas quoi vous dire. Mr. President, I, I think I'll leave it there. Uh, thank you, and thank you, Mr. Witness. I'll now, uh, well, it may be time for the break, but I, I've finished my questioning. Thank you. 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 President, thank you. It is now appropriate for us to take a short break, and let me have a break and resume at 10.30. Court officer, please assist uh, the witness during the break time and invite him back into the courtroom at 10.30.